Today we are going to see about uh, lasers. We are having lot of applications of lasers nowadays, medical field, uh, mechanical, in whatever the field that we have considered, the advanced technology is based on the lasers. So we are going to discuss about lasers. So lot of applications are there that we can see in the later classes. Now the basics of lasers that we are going to see now. The entire universe is made up of two things, matter and energy. The matter is composed, uh, divided like three things, solids, liquids and gases based on the atomic arrangement. So whatever it is, the solid, liquid and gases are made up of atoms or group of atoms, nothing but molecules. And we well know that atoms, the shape of atom is a spherical one. The central part of atom is known as nucleus, which is positively charged. And the electrons which are negatively charged revolve around the nucleus in orbits. Based on the availability of electron, we can fill the electrons in the orbits. Suppose, if we consider hydrogen, the electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1s1. That means we have only one electron. We can fill that one electron in first orbit in K shape like this. Suppose if you consider helium, the electronic configuration of helium is 1s2. That means we have two, two electrons. Each and every orbit is filled with two electrons. So the maximum capacity of the first orbit, nothing but K shell, is two electrons only based on the formula of 2n square. n represents the number of the orbit. If it is the first orbit, n square, 1, 2 into 1, 1, 2. So, first orbit can occupy only 2 electrons. Suppose if n is 2, 2 square, 4 into 2, 8. So, in second orbit, we can fill only 8 electrons. Suppose we, if we have 3 electrons, first we will uh, give 2 electrons to the first orbit and then we will go to the second orbit, L. So, now based on the availability of electron, we can fill the electrons in the, in the orbits like this so now as long as the electrons are in these orbits it is said to uh, the electrons are said to be in ground state if we supply energy to the electrons like this any kind of energy electrical energy or thermal energy if we heat the thing electrons will absorb the energy and goes to the next level like this or like this so now the electrons are in ex another excited levels. Then the art atom is said to be in excited state. If electrons are excited, then automatically the atom also said to be in the excited state. So please keep that in mind. So now if we consider any solid, all uh, the solid is composed of atoms. By supplying energy to that uh, solid, all the atoms will absorb the energy. So automatically all the electrons in the atoms will absorb the energy like that and goes to the excited state then the atom is said to be in excited state. Each and every atom is said to be in excited state. The position of electron in the excited state is not permanent. After some time, it will come to the ground state. So while it is coming to the ground state, it emits some energy. That means, if the, by giving energy, the atom is in excited state, while the electrons are coming back, the atoms will emit the energy. In total, the material or the solid will emit some kind of energy outside. So now, emitting this energy is called a radiation. So, this we are going to discuss about types of radiation. So, now we are going to discuss about the types of radiations. As we discussed earlier, each and every atom is provided with some electrons in the orbits. Let us take an atom which is having two energy levels E1 and E2 and assume that E1 is having one electron. That means we have an electron in the ground state. So E1 is considered as ground state, E2 as the excited state. Suppose if we supply energy to this entire atom, the electron will, the electron in the ground state will absorb the energy and goes to the excited state. This process is known as stimulated absorption. So now, stimulation means giving energy. Since we are supplying energy to the atom, the electron will absorb the energy and goes to the excited state. So now, 
giving energy is called stimulated electrons are taking the energy called absorption the entire process is known as stimulated absorption so due to this process the electron which is present in the ground state will goes to the excited state now second type of radiation now the electron is in excited state the electron will never be in the excited state forever it will spend a, a, for some amount of time for example the average the time spent by the electron in the excited state is called lifetime the lifetime of electron is about around 10 power minus 8 seconds that means it can spend 10 power minus 8 seconds in the excited state after that uh, lifetime over here we have to remember that the lifetime of electron is 10 power minus 8 seconds is average it depends on the material it may be 10 power minus 3 times sometimes 10 power minus 11 sometimes it depends on the material and the energy of the orbit so now after lifetime of electron is over electron will automatically comes to the ground state that means it make downward transition so due to this process while the electron is coming down it emits the energy in the form of a photon a photon whose energy is equals to h nu where h is Planck's constant nu is the frequency of the photon so that means while it is coming down it is emitting the photon means it is emitting some energy a light energy that is so now this process is known as spontaneous emission so now to happen this process we are not supplying any energy it happens automatically called spontaneous due to this downward transition energy is emitting that's why it is called emission here the energy is absorbing called absorption energy is emitting that's why it is called emission now we are going to see about the third type of radiation suppose if the electron is in excited state and if we supply energy to the electron which is in excited state it will make a downward transition to this one and because of that downward transition one photon will emit and the photon which is incident both will emit in the same direction so now here whatever the light that is emitted due to this spontaneous emission there is no direction it can emit in any direction but here the photon which is emitting due to this downward transition and the photon which is incident both are in the same direction for example if the mark if i leave this marker it will fall down easily suppose while it is falling down if we apply some external force the marker also will move in the external force direction both will move in the same direction the process while it is coming down here the photon is moving in any direction and by applying by supplying the energy the incident photon and the emitted photon both will move in the same direction here what we have to remember is the two photons are emitted before lifetime why because we are supplying the energy before lifetime only so now before lifetime all the electrons will in excited state only these two photons will go and stimulate two more electrons in the excited state so now they also will come to the ground state due to each downward transition two more photons will emit so this process is known as stimulated emission why because we are supplying energy to applying energy to the system that's why it is called stimulated energy is emitting called emission so basically we are having three types of radiations the first one is stimulated absorption spontaneous emission stimulated emission Stimulate in the first case by supplying the energy electrons will absorb the energy and goes to the excited state in the second case the excited electron will come automatically by emitting some energy since remember the phot emitted photon is not having any particular direction here before lifetime is over if you supply the energy to the electron which is in excited state it will comes to the ground state automatically so while it is coming down the two photons will emit in the same direction so here what we have to remember is in this particular process the emitted light is having a particular direction so that means light and step by step we are up, we are supplying one photon and we are getting two photons the two photons are going and stimulating two more becoming four 
and 4 will go and stimulate 4 more electrons and becoming 8. So step by step the light is amplified, number of photons are increasing. That's why it is, uh, we can say light is amplifying, sorry, light So now, since the light is amplifying by a process called stimulated emission, stimulated emission. Since all the process is happening in an atom, so the atoms are present in a solid. So the energy is coming out of the solid. If any solid or any material is emitting the energy that is called radiation as we discussed earlier. Since we are getting some energy outside that's why it is called radiation. So now this we can call since the light is amplifying by a process called stimulated emission of radiation. If you consider the first letters that is nothing but our laser. So to have the laser, the basic concept and the basic principle is stimulated emission. 